Hey guys, welcome to my channel. On today, I'm Sandra Renette. I want to thank you so much for joining me on today. You know, many of you had asked that I would preach part two of how to believe God for answered prayer. Well, this will be part two of the message. So I want you to remember to subscribe, click that notification button, give me a thumbs up. Come on guys, let's grow in the word of God. Okay, guys, let's get into the Word of God on today. We are going to read from Mark, the 10th chapter. So it's a little reading, but it's good reading. And the Bible reads, And when they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out saying, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, a great deal, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good cheer, arise. He calleth thee. And he cast away his garment and rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I do unto thee? And blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately the Bible says, He received his sight and followed Jesus. So the subtitle of my message of how to believe God for answered prayer is called Faith Call. So I made up my own definition of what I think a faith call is. It is saying something in faith. It is calling on the name of the Lord with steadfast believing that he will answer your call or your prayer according to his promise. Now again, God has given each of us a portion of faith. For the Bible says in Romans 12 and 3, according as God has dealt to every man a portion of faith. So everybody has a portion of faith to believe God. For answered prayer, we just need to ignite our faith. So let's look at our text here on today. The Bible says that they came to Jericho and there were a great crowd of people following Jesus and blind by Maus, the son of Timaeus, he sat by the wayside. And the Bible says that when he heard that it was Jesus, he began to cry out and he said, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. I looked up the word son of David and the son of David means you are the promised Messiah. You're coming to earth to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy. It means you are the descendants of David and Abraham and you are the deliverer we have been waiting for. We began to recognize who Jesus is according to scripture. We take the word of God and stand on the scripture. Jesus will become just what he said. And that is how we receive answered prayer. So let's go on down to verse 48 in our text on today. The Bible says that many people charged, they rebuked 
blind Bartimaeus. They told him to be quiet. In other words, he don't want to hear from you. You hold your peace, blind Bartimaeus. But the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus, he cried out the more. And he said, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on See, me. See, when you're believing God for answered prayer, there are going to be faith obstacles. And now this faith obstacles could be yourself or it could also come from people. And people will tell you you're too religious. You believe in God for answered prayer. It don't take all of that praying. It don't take all of that seeking God. Oh yes it do. And it takes that add some more. Or it could come from yourself. Well God don't want to hear from me. I'm too unworthy. Or uh, I just sinned the other day and, and, and I God don't want to hear from me. But the Bible tells us to come boldly before the throne of grace that we might receive all the help that we need. So God definitely wants to hear from you. So faith obstacles could be ourselves or it could come from people that we know. And so the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus, he continually calling on the name of the Lord. What he was really saying is, Jesus, you're the promised Messiah. Have mercy on me. Because he knew that name. He said, you're the one that came to earth to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament. Have mercy on me. And not only that, he was saying that you are the deliverer. I need to see. I want to see. And you came to earth because you are the deliverer. Have mercy mercy on me. And what I like about the next verse, the Bible says that Jesus stood still and he commanded, he ordered him to be called. And they called blind Bartimaeus and saying unto him, be of good cheer. How many know that's just like people when they see you about to be blessed, they want some of that blessing. And they said, be of good cheer. He calleth you. And so the Bible says that Jesus stood still. Now we know that in the Bible, the Bible talks about that Moses, he told the people stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Jesus stood still because he is the salvation of the Lord. He is our healer. He is our way maker out of no way. He is the God that answer our prayer. And so I want to say to you on today that Jesus is standing still. When you pray and you come to God, he is standing still ready to give you your miracle. Jesus is always teaching us lessons. And so here, Jesus was teaching a lesson to blind Bartimaeus. He asked him in the verse, what do you want me to do? Jesus knew what blind Bartimaeus needed because he is all knowing. But he said to him, what do you want me to do? In other words, Jesus was saying, say something, blind Bartimaeus. And he's saying to us on today, say something out of your mouth. Say it in faith. Say it until something happens. And the Bible says in Matthew 7 and 7, it says, ask. In other words, say something, ask it in prayer and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find, knock, be steadfast and the door will be open to you. Now I want you to catch what I'm about to say. God wants us to ask. He wants us to say something because the spirit gives life to our words. Let me say that again. The spirit gives life to our words. In John 6 and 63, the Bible says the spirit gives life. The flesh count for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit. And so when our words line up with the word of God, our words is full of spirit and life because the spirit gives life to our words. Now that was very powerful right there. Let me say that one more time. So when our words line up or when our words, what we're praying about, what we're believing God for, it lines up with the scripture. The spirit takes our words and give our words life. 
And the Bible says that the word of God is active and alive. So the spirit takes our words when we agree with the word of God. The spirit takes what we're praying about and bring it to life. In other words, something starts to happen in the atmosphere. Ah, glory be unto God. So what happens here? Whenever our faith call words get into the atmosphere, that's why Jesus says, say something. So whenever our faith call words, whatever we're praying about and believing God for, it gets into the atmosphere. Our words, hear me now, create exactly what we want to see happen first in the spirit realm and then in the natural. That's the reason why our faith has to be steadfast. It has to be unmovable. We have to believe God no matter what happened, no matter what we see, we have to stand on faith. It's in the spirit realm now because we already spoke it. Our words, when they line up with the word of God again, it is spirit and it is life. And so something is is happening in the spirit. You know, God never take his word lightly. God say something and when he say something, it happens. When it says in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, the world was empty and void. And what happened? God said, let there be. And what happened? Because he said something, something happened. And I want to say to you on today, say something. Because when you say something and it lines up with the word of God, Something happens in the spirit realm and it takes you believing God in faith until something happens. Let me give you a good example here. Me and my husband, and this is a true story, and this is in my book, so you may want to get a copy of the book. I got all different kinds of testimonies in there of the faithfulness of God. And so it's going to be in the description section of this video. Now here's the testimony. Me and my husband decided that we wanted to build us a house. And so we said, we're going to believe God to build a house. And what we did is we constantly spoke out of our mouth. We're going to build us a house from the ground up. And so years passed by, we kept speaking it. And one time I was walking with my son and he was about seven or nine at the time. Now my son knew that we had been speaking that we're going to build us a house. And to him, it was taking a long time. And so he said to me, Mama, when are we going to build our house? And I said to him, I don't know, but we're going to build us a house. I was still speaking faith, even though years has passed. And what happened? We built us a house from the ground up. And I don't know how we did it because if you look look at our income, it will seem impossible because God is faithful. God is a God that answered prayer and he will answer our prayer if we stand in steadfast. Okay. See, listen to me here. It is our responsibility to speak out of our mouths the promises of God. Hear me? And it is God's responsibility to answer our faith call according to his word. We need to say, I'm going to trust the Lord. God is faithful to his word. No matter how long it takes, I'm going to believe God for this answered prayer. Because our words is powerful and God is ready to answer our faith call. Listen, I want to thank you so much for joining me on today. And God wants to give us exactly what we believe him for. But we have to stay in steadfast faith. We have to keep calling on the name of the Lord with a faith call. No matter what happens, no matter what it looks like, no matter if everything turns totally the other way, we have to believe God and stay in faith because God is a God that answer our prayers. Thank you so much for joining me on today. Listen, I want you to remember to subscribe, click that notification button so that you can be notified when I post new videos. Also guys, tell a friend, tell a neighbor about growing in the word of God. God wants you to grow in the word and in order to grow in the word, you got to stay in the word. Bye guys.